Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Uh, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day here in Newark and Sherwood. I love it when the weather's like this, when the sun is shining and the sky is blue because it shows off villages like this one in their best light. And this village has quite a few highlights, including that church you can see behind me. We're on the banks of the River Trent again. This is Collingham. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Today we take on Collingham, next to Sutton-on-Trent. This is the largest village so far within the Newark and Sherwood district that this channel has seen. It's also the second time we've seen a village with the name Collingham. The first is close to Weatherby within the city of Leeds. The Newark and Sherwood flavour has boundaries that cover the main village, which we'll have a good walk around in a few moments, and also a couple of small hamlets out towards the A46, the major dual carriageway between Lincoln and Newark. One of those hamlets is Dainthorpe, which includes Dainthorpe Hill. It's a tiny area in the far southeast. Then there's also Bruff and a small area known as Wheatley as well. We're beginning this episode by driving through those areas and into Collingham from the south. Bruff is the most interesting of these smaller areas. It stands on the site of the Roman town of Crocolana, which grew around a military fort in the first century AD. The town spread along what was called the Foz Way, better known now as the A46, for about a mile, and it had ditched defences. Bruff once had a Methodist chapel too, but it's now permanently closed. Once over the A46 via a bridge, we hit Whitemore Lane, which runs adjacent to Wheatley, an area of scattered farms and isolated farm buildings. We'll eventually end up at the A1133. The A1133 is the same road that Besthorpe stands astride. To get into Collingham from here we have to cross a level crossing. The railway line in question serves the village with the station. The A1133 then becomes Collingham High Street. All of this will be caught on what will be a two hour walk around the village. Our start point is at the northern end on Woodhill Road. Once on Woodhill Road, we can start properly. Our first thing of note is literally yards from my parking spot, a bus stop. You need the number 367 out here. Next is a wildflower garden. There are a few of these in the village. This one is the site of the North Collingham Pinfold, a structure that was used to trap stray animals. We've heard that one before. The fact it was called the North Collingham Pinfold is important. You see, the modern village is all one place, but early Danish settlers here split it into two separate settlements. It was referred to as Long Collingham, and the Danes called one half North Bee and the other South Bee. Later, in medieval times, North and South Collingham existed as two parishes. The village is now one long settlement following the fleet, which until this episode I hadn't learned was once the old course of the River Trent. Why hadn't that ever come up before, I ask you? After a little walk through some of the newer areas in the north of the village, we can take a footpath to the high street, where we'll encounter most of the village's historical stuff. Oh. 
Okay, and just like that, we're on the high street. Now, crossing over from where the footpath is, I'm gonna be heading down the high street for a short way. But first of all, check this out. This is the Collingham Cross. I'm just gonna go across here and have a look at this. It's another wildflower, wildflower area. Can't speak this morning. A bit like the North Collingham Pinfold with a very historic structure in the middle of it. So straight away on the high street, we have a point of interest. This is the Collingham Cross, and it's believed to date to the 14th century. Originally, it stood on the other side of the road. Some believe it to be an Eleanor Cross, but that can't be true, as Collingham was not on the route Queen Eleanor took to London. A market cross seems more likely, but there's no evidence for that. Now we're heading south along the high street for a time until we reach Collingham's central shopping area. On the way, we pass this care home, Copper Beaches. A little further down, we have 3R Financial Services. Quite a lot of Collingham's businesses historically developed along this road, including its pubs, although not all are still in business. There are 62 listed buildings in Collingham, six of which are dated as 16th century or earlier. White's Directory of 1832 described Collingham as one of the handsomest villages in the county. When brick became more widely used in the late 18th century, it replaced original mud walling. Some buildings would have had thatched roofs. Pantiles are now more commonly found. So what we're effectively heading for here is Collingham's central area where the shops and other amenities are. Some of those amenities are no longer present. That's an old pub, that. It's the Old White Heart. No longer a pub. Looks like it's long been uh, a residential property. We've got a beauty salon next to that. And then just up there is the post office. And on the left is where we'll find the main sort of shopping area in a few moments. Local amenities include a large supermarket, which we're coming to, but there are some smaller convenience stores, a butcher's and a post office, the latter of which can be seen here. There are religious buildings too. This is Collingham Methodist Chapel built in 1855, and it belongs to the Newark and Southall Methodist Circuit. On Baptist Lane, there's a fire station. There's a clue in that street name too. On here, there's a former Baptist church, now occupied by the Emmanuel Christian Center. Back to the high street, this building is the Collingham Community Partnership Library, better known as the Library at 71, which hosts some events, groups and courses. The very centre of village life surrounds this building. This is the Collingham Memorial Hall, which acts as a vital community hub. It's an attractive building too, don't you think? Oh, and opposite we have the local chippy, named the Village Fish Bar. There's a doctor's surgery away to the right, and an ATM close by too. So we're not short of a parish notice board in this one. Look at this, there are 11 notice boards on the side of the War Memorial Hall. Which one do I pick? <laughs> I'm probably going to go for uh, the one right at the end because this is the one that says Collingham Parish Council. And this was presented for the best kept village in 1987. Let's put a card on this one. If nothing else, these 11 notice boards go to show just how much stuff goes on in Collingham, even though a couple of them were empty. Collingham has a vibrant mix of facilities, groups, activities and services, which support both Collingham and the wider surrounding area. This area is known as the village centre. Collingham has always had a central area, but just recently this has been developed further from what it once was. Here we have a history board in the village centre. This is well worth a read. There's only so much I can tell you in these episodes. Collingham's history runs very, very deep. There's a medical centre, dentist and pharmacy complex in the village centre, which serves much of the surrounding area. Plus, there's another library within the same building. The development of this area was supported by the majority of villagers who voted in a parish council survey. The largest retailer here now is this co-op supermarket, standing in front of a large car park. So around the back of the co-op we've got Collingham's football ground, which is here. Collingham Football and Sports Club. I'll just put the camera through this gate so you can see. There it is, there's a football ground. 
Now Collingham does have a cricket team as well. The cricket pitch is quite a ways out of the village towards uh, next village down, which is, let me think, Langford to the south. Um, so that's going to come in the picture bit because my route does not pass that. There's also some uh, tennis courts here as well. And I believe somewhere there's a bowls club too. So as far as sports go, this is one that's got plenty. After walking up a footpath, of which there are plenty in Collingham by the way, we're on to Swinderby Road. Swinderby is a neighbouring settlement over the border into Lincolnshire. That brings us to the Collingham Community Park, which came into the ownership of Collingham Parish Council when North and South Collingham were amalgamated in 1970. There's a skate park which was completely replaced in 2018 with concrete ramps and it's suitable for all ages. The park is located next to the village primary school and that's this building here. We emerge from the park onto another residential area. This is Windsor Close and we're making our way back to Swinderby Road again in a few short moments. This little residential area gives me a chance to talk about the village's name and it's the same story here as it was in Collingham near Weatherby. It's derived from the Saxon words Inga and Ham, and Collar was the name of the chief. Bronze Age and Roman finds indicate there had been a settlement here, though, long before those times. So continuing down Swinderby Road, in a moment I'll be turning down a road called the Hedgerows. We're heading for the train station next. Now, this area is very residential, so there's not really much to film. The residential areas continue and this is the newest part of the village along its eastern edge with the Nottingham to Lincoln railway line running behind it. At the end of the hedgerows we take a left turn in order to go and check out Collingham's railway station, a grade 2 listed building in the aggressive Italian style dating from around 1848. It has a large 58 space car park which is not this area, this is private property. The car park is located on the other side, opening in May 2014 to help boost passenger numbers at the station. Its most infamous connection is to Mainel Huntley, who was once the station master. He was charged in 1848 with embezzling money belonging to the Midland Railway. Now when the channel eventually reaches the town of Newark-on-Trent, there are two railway stations there. One of them is called Newark Northgate and that's the one that most people know because that's where the East Coast Main Line runs through. But there's also Newark Castle and this is the line that runs to that station. It's the Nottingham to Lincoln line. Bit of history here about uh, the railway line. We'll talk a bit more about that when we, re when we reach Newark. And this is Collingham Station. The Nottingham to Lincoln line was engineered by George Stevenson and was opened by the Midland Railway on the 3rd of August 1846. This won't be the last we'll see of this route. The station acts as a turnaround point for us as we go back into the village via Station Road. Our next mission is to locate a footpath which will cut off a corner. This is the right of way in question, although this was not initially easy to find. It runs over a horse field and when we reach civilization again, we'll be in South Collingham. It's hard to know exactly where the boundary between the former North and South Collingham parishes actually is, but I would imagine Station Road is a good approximation. Via the paddock and Dykes End, we'll emerge onto the High Street again. This is a good time to talk about one of Collingham's ongoing issues, the construction of a bypass. The proposed bypass is not seen as a priority due to environmental concerns, but many villagers say that it would be offset by the reduction in damage to the built-up environment along the High Street. I'm not going to lie, that wasn't the easiest section ever to film. That footpath was quite difficult to follow, but we're here anyway. And at the end of this road, this will take us back to the High Street and towards one of Collingham's pubs. The High Street has a set of traffic lights at Station Road, which can be avoided by using Low Street as something of a rat run. This is another reason why the bypass is so sought after. Here's that pub I was talking about, although as of 2015, it's not a pub anymore. This still displays the king's head on its walls, but it's now a Chinese restaurant called the Rose Orchard. 
The building directly opposite here says Schoolhouse on its wall. A national school for children of both sexes was built here in 1839, although whether it was this building or not, I'm unsure. This is where we turn onto the green, and this is easily the most historic area of South Collingham. There are loads of little characterful cottages down here. Incidentally, if you carried on through Collingham via Cottage Lane, which runs parallel to the A1133 before joining it, you'd pass Collingham and District Cricket Club, and a tennis club too. Well, in terms of architecture, this is certainly Collingham's finest part, isn't it? But one thing we haven't seen is a church yet, apart from the Methodist Church earlier. There are two to show you. The first one is just up here behind this wall, and the second one is that way so those are our next two major landmarks so now we're going to have a look at the two churches in Collingham you might have guessed it already but there's two because Collingham used to be two settlements there's a burial ground at this end of the village too called South End Cemetery and there's also a phone box as well The phone box is one of those rare finds too, because there's no book exchange or defib machine, nor is it empty. Rather, it still has a working phone. Collector's item, that folks. St John the Baptist Church originally served South Collingham. It dates from the 12th century, and it was restored a few times, notably by Reverend Joseph Mayer in 1846. Another restoration was carried out in 1862 and 63 by J.H. Hakewill when the gallery was removed, the arches were restored, the chancel walls raised and a new timber roof provided. The organ was enlarged by Forster and Andrews in 1863 and it was replaced in 1883 by a new instrument made by Wordsworth and Maskell. It has a peal of five bells, all dating from 1841. We're now on Lunn Lane heading back onto the High Street and for the Royal Oak. In 1894, the Royal Oak was a posting house. These days, it's a gorgeous country pub. It stands right next to the traffic lights, the same lights which people try and avoid if possible, as mentioned earlier. Until 1900, it was named the Railway Hotel. It was an important meeting place historically and hosted a number of property auctions, including that of the Crown, another former pub further down the high street. So I'm heading down another little footpath here on Bell Lane, which will take me back towards Low Street. Uh, there's just the church, the other church that I've mentioned earlier to pass, and that's basically the main walk done. So you guys need today's picture bit, and that's coming your way right now. The route will end back on Low Street again, where we still have to catch the other church. It's a short walk back north from here to where the road runs into the A1133 opposite Woodhill Road. And on the way, we pass a pumping station. Everywhere I go where there's a major river, I come across all this important water-related stuff that a lot of people forget is even there. It's not long before the second of the two churches comes into view. This is All Saints Church, which served North Collingham. Arguably, this one is much more interesting. In 1867, it received a new turret clock by Reuben Bosworth of Nottingham, which struck the hours and the quarters. And there are two notable brothers buried in the churchyard here. These were John and William Bacon, who took part in the charge of the Light Brigade under the assumed name of Baker. William was killed, but John returned, later leaving the army. Just before we hit the A1133 again, we have a youth and community centre, a Victorian hall with many of its original features. It's rated five stars by Newark and Sherwood District Council. 
And so lastly, we're back on the high street again, and we're here where the grey horse used to be. The pub used to stand here, no longer does. It's just a bit of uh, barren waste ground now. It's probably gonna be redeveloped into something, but uh, I have no idea what. Maybe you Collingham locals can help me out with that. What's the grey horse gonna be now, guys? I'm sure you guys know better than me. So I've had the village to myself this morning, near enough. I started about half past seven. It's about quarter past nine now, so taking me about an hour and 45 minutes to walk around. It's a lovely place. I've been here a few times before, um, but even so, I've still discovered some stuff I never knew. And I imagine that you have too, even you Collingham locals who live here uh, will probably have learned a thing or two about uh, this place. So yeah, it's time for me to move on to my uh, next one. And to get to my next one, I need to drive down Woodhill Road, down there. It's about a mile and a half away. I'll see you when I get there. I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of Collingham, and I'm out.